So here's Jen, and she's always a bridesmaid, so much so she calls herself a professional. She's been in a, get this, 125 weddings. That's a lot of work. And she's learned a lot. She has learned a lot. And she has like tips, you know, for people that are getting married. She said there's not enough planning that goes into it. You know, I mean, there's some other things that she has. But my takeaway is you are a professional bridesmaid. Like she gets paid for it. Oh, she gets paid. Well, she gets paid for her advice, right? Well, yes. And also her company is called Bridesmaids for Hire. Bridesmaids for Hire. So, yeah. Really? Yeah. People, I've never heard of that. I've never heard of that in my life. So, I want to know. There's so many questions. Like, how much is she paid? She's been in 125, but is she the only employee? Or is there maybe somebody that says, I want, oh, here's how it works. I bet. I want, I need six bridesmaids because I have six groomsmen, but only five people can make it. So, I need to find another so then they call. And you have to drop some dime for this. Jen. And I'm um, sure then there's travel and all this other stuff. Right. Because typically, like a bridesmaid would pay for their own dress. That's pay their own stuff. Exactly. But if you are hiring a bridesmaid. Maybe she should be paying them. N- why? No, no. Because you'd have to. So if you're the bride, you have to pay her to for her services. Mm-hmm. Then you have to pay for her shoes, her dress, her hair, her makeup. Her travel. Her travel. Wow. What a racket. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. It's not the traditional engagement ring anymore. Rob and Liz in the morning, his radio. So, for instance, our producer Ninja has an amethyst. And why is it amethyst again? Because it's my favorite color. Favorite color. And it's not just an amethyst. She did rose gold for the band, which I think is also fairly unique because it's usually gold or like white gold. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's beautiful. I didn't know that. Yeah. So we're, we're hearing from some folks at 800-447-7234. And Jess said, okay, if she could do it again and kind of change her engagement ring, she would want an opal ring. She says it's her birthstone, but it was also her granny's favorite stone. So kind of in honor of granny. Is opal a color? Opal is kind of, a, it's hard to describe. It's white, but it almost has iridescent little flecks of different colors within it. I love an opal. Like if you uh, move your hand around, you can see yellows and pinks and greens and blues. It's really? beautiful. That's a, I ask those questions because I'm colorblind. That's why I ask them. Okay, Lisa is here at 800-447-7234. What's your engagement ring? A gold band with a ruby in the middle and a diamond on either side. Why a ruby? It was based on the verse Proverbs 31.10, the love of a good woman is more precious than rubies. What would your friends say about your ring when you got it? Everybody thinks it's beautiful, and then they ask if it's my wedding ring, my, my engagement ring. And when I say yes, they think it's very unique. So, yes, it was unique back in the day. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. On his radio. Hearing about all these unique engagement rings that people have chosen outside of, you know, the traditional diamond ring. It's a trend, it looks like. Robin Liz in the morning, his radio. Yeah, Marcy texted and said her engagement ring is a diamond in the middle, but on either side, she has sapphires. That sounds nice. Almost sounds like a a princess ring, almost like Lady Diana had an engagement ring in the middle and diamonds. Marcy, you're a princess. You are. Yeah, you were a princess before. You're royalty. You are royalty. (laughs) Yes, you are, girl. Chris, Chris is different, texted, said uh, it's a tattoo. He actually did get a tattoo. He said he's a mechanic, so it's not safe to wear a ring. Plus, it's always with him, can't take it off, and he just thinks it's more special and personal. Yeah, a lot of people have been doing that. I mean, they'll take their ring off because they don't want to lose it and then put a tattoo on. Yeah, or It's always there. Yeah, certain jobs, you just can't wear them. It's just not safe. That's true. Betsy's here at 800-447-7234. Okay, what about your engagement ring, Betsy? Mine is an ebony sapphire because I was born in September and also I always wanted um, something different. What is an ebony sapphire? It's a super dark sapphire, so it almost looks black, but it's like navy blue. What made you choose that other than you just love it and it, it is your birthstone, right? Yeah, sapphire is my birthstone. It was, I actually wanted a black diamond <laughs> to be very, very rare, but they're super expensive and hard to find. And so then I was tossing up the idea of the sapphire. Of course, my husband went out 
and now husband, <laughs> went out and looked, and he found, to me, the best between both worlds, an ebony one. So it, it's really dark, but it's still my sapphire. So it sounds like he did good. He did perfect. <laughs> You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. Dan, how do you say his last name? Orlosky. Dan Orlosky. He is, uh, he's on ESPN, a part of NFL Live. And when everything happened on Monday night with Damar Hamlin... And, and, and the world was praying. This young man, live on television, on ESPN, stops and says this. And maybe this is not the right thing to do, but I want it's just on my heart that I want to pray for it is. DeMar Hamlin right, right, right now. Um, I'm going to do it out loud. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to bow my head, and I'm just going to pray for him. Um, God, we come to you in these moments that we don't understand, that are hard, uh, because we believe that your God and coming to you and praying to you um, has impact. And he continues to pray. Mm-hmm. And it's such a heartfelt prayer. And everybody's joining in on the set. Yeah. And praying along with him. And I thought, that was bold. It was bold. You know? It was, but he was led. And I love that in the moment, he listened. He listened to that voice that said, you need to pray right now. And I love the one, and I don't watch ESPN a lot, so I'm not sure who the other announcers are, but one said, yes, it is. It is. it is. You know, this it's is appropriate. A, a, right to yeah. pray now. And at the end of the prayer, those that were also in kind of that round table that they do said amen, said yes, said, you know, that was great. You know, this kind of thing that they were all in agreement with that prayer. A couple of things. They care about DeMar. Yeah. And so they really wanted to pray as the nation and the world is praying for DeMar right now because he's still in the hospital, still in critical condition. He's breathing on his own. That's so good to hear. But to have somebody that just didn't care, you know, here I am on a platform, you know, for mm-hmm. this guy. He's in he's in mainstream media. Right. And, there, and, and let's just face the facts. In some places in mainstream uh, media, uh, being a Christian is not popular. It is not popular. At all. And certainly praying and taking that time out of that programming was most likely not okayed by management. And so he stepped out in faith to do what he was led to do and think of the thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions that potentially could have been watching. You know, they were. You you just know it. They were. And so it challenges me when I'm out and about and just living life. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Step out in faith. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning on his radio. So a lot of people got on bended knee during the holidays. They did. It looked like everybody was getting engaged. I saw a lot of pictures. Yes. A lot of friends, kids are getting engaged and all that other stuff. Right. And here's the thing that I'm noticing now hmm. is that it's it's not the uh, traditional diamond. It, it's not. And I'm reading that um, the Generation Z and Millennial generations are like, eh, diamond or not, we don't care. Well, I think that they want it to be so unique, and I I love that about it, that uh, diamond is not every girl's best friend, as the old saying goes. Maybe it's something like um, a tattoo. That that seems to be one of the biggest. I've seen a lot of that, but yeah. usually that's later on in life. If the ring doesn't fit anymore right. or you want to protect the ring, if you like work out a lot and so people do the tattoo yeah. around the ring finger. But millennials and Gen Z are starting out with it. Oh, Which for is, real? Yeah. Or just like a metal band, or it could be just a different stone. So my son got engaged... Uh, oh, over yeah. the over the last part of the summer, right up on a mountain, which was really nice. I never did see that ring. It's a diamond. Yeah, it's traditional. Yeah. Oh, I got to see that. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, and um, I'll I'll ask if I can bring it in for you. You know that, or at least a picture, because I like to zoom in and see all the little details now, that are in it. Ninja, I didn't notice this until the other day, but Ninja's wedding ring is not. It, it, that's what is that? Is that a sapphire? Mine is an amethyst. Amethyst. So it's purple, but sapphires are really big. But amethyst is really big as well. But I like that. And yours is also rose gold, isn't it, Ninja? Mm-hmm. Okay, so not only is the metal unique, but also the stone. So why did you pick that, or did did your husband pick that? Um, I picked amethyst because it's my favorite color, purple. And I specifically wanted something that was unique because I would absolutely hate walking in the grocery store and someone going, oh, I like your ring. I have the same one. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, that'd be awful for me. <laughs> Would it? Yeah. To, like showing up at a party in the same dress and you're just like, oh, yeah. I spent so much time on this. So I get it. But it's also you, just unique to Ninja as a person and their relationship, which is the best part about the whole thing. And cost effective. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. On his radio. <laughs> Sorry, hairball. Robin Liz in the morning, his radio. I hope you're okay. <laughs> I'm okay. All right. You need a you need a sip of water or anything? We can no. go get you some water. No, but I know. We'll take you're... care of you. <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely take care of you. Hey, there is this cat that was just left abandoned because some people moved out. They didn't take their cat with them. But the neighborhood knew who it was, Juliet. And one neighbor was looking at Juliet. It's like, Juliet just seems just not lively right now. Very lethargic. So they brought Juliet, this cat, to the vet. Turns out there was 38 hair ties inside this stomach of Juliet. Poor thing. So they did surgery and they were able to remove all the hair ties. And the, you, the cat's going to be fine. Uh, 38. Yeah. I mean, animals will find anything. Must have been hungry. But. See, I don't think so. What do you think? I don't think so because um, I think they just like to chew on things like this, like and hair. swallow. Yeah, because they don't know that it's going to hurt them. They just are chewing along and chewing along, and, and there it goes. And I wonder then, how ooh. long they've been in there. Honestly, it just depends. Where did she find them all? That that's that my is a question. big question. Like if she is not, if she's just like a neighborhood cat. 38, did somebody like dump all their old hair ties or, you know, how? I need or to somebody know how. all of a sudden is just missing hair ties. I just mean, slowly but surely. Where'd my hair tie go? Well, I keep mine like now they're all over the house, I will say. Because, you know, because I'll <laughs> I take bet. them. Well, I mean, because I take them out. You know, I even have a couple, I think, around here somewhere. But, but in my bathroom, I do have a little place for them. So let's just say somebody let Juliet into the house and she found the hair ties and boom, she took them all at the same time and then decided to graze on them all day. That's, you know, <laughs> like a charcuterie Liz board. Has quite the imagination. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning on his radio. A couple of years ago, Hannah's working at a cafe, like a coffee shop, and she has like eight hour shifts, like, you know, everybody else in the free world, I guess. So she's working and she hears one song. She says 117 times a day. Oh, she must be tired of it now. She is done. So much so that she said, I'm going to start a GoFundMe page, and we're going to get rid of this song. <laughs> For real? Yeah. She said, we, and she's talking about she and her husband, uh, who equally does not like this song, um, we are going to start a GoFundMe, and we're going to buy the rights to this song, and then we are going to never allow anybody to ever play this song again. Well, <laughs> here's the thing. If it's a really popular song, it's really popular. To buy the rights for it is going to be a lot of money. Well, they've raised ninety-two thousand dollars so far. Other people must not like this very popular there, song. There's about three hundred and fifty people that have. I know they've all With come deep pockets. Yes, exactly. Um, the song. Last Christmas, I gave you my heart. I'm familiar with that one. <laughs> Who's that? Oh, my goodness. It's it's done by a lot of people. Like, Wham uh, was the original artist on that one. Oh, but, like, yeah. you know, T-Swift has done it. I, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of different people have done this song in their version. But, I mean, come on. <laughs> Never wants it to be played again. Now, is she going to get upset if they do find the money to buy the rights? If I play it in my own house... You know, is she going to come after me then? Because mm -hmm. Watch out. <laughs> You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. On his radio. Okay, well, you got a mess. Might as well turn it into decoration. It's Rob and Liz in the morning, his radio. It's a trend. It's all over social. It's called clutter core. So embracing the clutter that is in your life. So here's the premise. So think of a child's bedroom. It's got all the little trophy, trophies and the ribbons and the toys and all the little action figures and dolls that are set up everywhere. Everywhere, and they're saying, make that, uh, you know, th fast forward that into an adult situation. So, like, the things, like, if you like movie posters or if you like um, little uh, tchotchkes, you know, little things that you just set up everywhere, just cram them all into one place. Like clutter. Clutter is good. That's called hoard. It, you know, a little bit, but they're saying to make it look a little better <laughs> just like it's thrown in a box somewhere okay listen have you seen scott watson's desk where's scott scott yeah okay um your desk yeah dude 
Let's just call it highly decorated. Yeah, <laughs> highly <laughs> decorated. Highly decorated? Clutter core? That's that's just what the trend is called for whatever reason. So it's like hashtag clutter core. And so you take a picture of, let's say you have a dresser in your bedroom and it has every little knick-knack and little thing that anybody has ever given you and it's all on top of this dresser, then you are embracing clutter core. That's called a mess. You know what? Potato to you, potato to me. Scott, I guess there's hope for you, man. Yeah. Can we call my garage highly decorated? (laughs) You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. On his radio. There is a whole city that said, let's help some people and give those who can't get a job, a job and a place to live. It's Rob and Liz in the morning, his radio. Yeah, so there's um, 1,800 homeless people in this city, in Kansas City, and they took 26 of them. And I think this is kind of a pilot program they're trying out to see if it's going to work. But they took 26 of those homeless and gave them a job because when they fill out an application to get housing, you got to have a place to work on there so that you can afford, you know, to pay the rent. So they cleaned up a lot of stuff. They got two uh, hurdles in a sprint, they said, of 67,000 pounds of trash My around goodness. the city. My goodness. I mean, and they're working really, really hard. And so Hope Faith is the name of this initiative. Mm-hmm. And, and it's working. And they're helping out. They get about $15 an hour. Yeah. Yeah, and so, so far of the 26, and I mean, it's going to be a process, right? So four of the 26 have been able to secure housing. That's because, great. Yeah, because they were able to put, yes, I have a place to live. I have a physical address. They were able to put that on the application for housing, and so they got to take that next step. That that has got to be something huge, an accomplishment for those people. And it's going on for, I think they said, a four-month trial period, right. and it looks like it's working. So this has the potential to keep going stronger. Right, because 26 now, maybe it's 52 the next time, maybe it's 104 the next time. And see if it works there. Maybe it can work here. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. Crossing a busy road is tough enough. But when you're in a wheelchair, it's a little bit more challenging. Oh, sure. Here's this one lady. She wants to meet up with her granddaughter and do some grocery shopping. The only way she can get there is on her wheelchair, not getting in a car or anything like that. So she's trying to cross the road and is struggling. And traffic, this is in Glendale, Arizona. It's a really busy intersection where she is in the city. And so she can't do it. All of a sudden, Officer Cody Alloway pulls up notices what's going on, he gets out of his cruiser, goes to the crosswalk, and helps push her not just across the street, but all the way to the grocery store where she's going to meet up with her granddaughter. Isn't that great that he took time to do that? Because, you know, if you look at, you're showing kind of the the video, you can see this, his radio TV, but um, there are people that are in the crosswalk, and they just sort of pass her. And I I don't think that they were being mean or anything. They were just busy and in their own heads and in their own worlds. But he actually took the time to look out of himself and say, hey, she needs some help. Yeah. And and she she got it. And and somebody captured it. And all of a sudden now you're seeing this. This happened like a year ago. Mm -hmm. And it's just becoming very viral right now on your feed. Yeah. So I think it's his at least partially his partner that is filming, uh, videoing what's going on. But then... I think there's also like security cameras from that intersection that caught some of it to see it from different angles. And she's got a smile on her face. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. Scott Stallings is a realtor in Atlanta and he opens up his mail the other day and was shocked about the invitation that he just received. It's Rob and Liz in the morning, his radio. Not only was it an invite to go to the Masters in Augusta, which is coveted by a lot of people. They're like, I so want to go. I want to be there. And it's it's hard to get in unless yeah. you're already in, right? Yeah, or a little, you, you, little money. It, lots of money. <laughs> lots of money. Mm-hmm. People who live there rent out their homes and can pay their mortgage for an entire year just by renting out their homes. It's crazy. I'm a anyway, home in Augusta. Wow. Right? I know, wow. right? So here's the thing. Not only was it an invitation to come to the Masters, but it was an invite to play in the Masters. Well, he must be a really good golfer. I mean, mm. I know he's a realtor, no. but... No. No? No. Mm. There is a pro golfer named Scott Stallings. <laughs> the dude lives in Hawaii. He, they don't even live been, in the same town. 
down. He's been sitting at his house waiting for that invitation for him to officially come to the Masters. And he's like, I must really be bad. Oh, no. I can't even come to this thing. You know what I think? I bet he thinks that his wife or his kids lost that invite. And he's been like, what'd you do with it? Did y'all check the mail? Where is it? Where's my package? Where's so, my invite? Scott Stallings, the realtor, did the right thing. Oh, good. He's not going to go and play. Oh, good. <laughs> Can you imagine if he showed up? Oh, my, like hey, Happy Gilmore be, or something? I've, I've got the piece of paper right here. It says I can come. Oh. So... <laughs> Anyway, he was able to reach out to him on social, and he's got his invitation now to go. Well, Scott, the real Scott, the other Scott Stallings, who's the golfer, not the realtor. Yeah, the realtor Scott did the right thing and got the invite. You know what, though? I hear they are giving him invitations to go to the Masters For to real? watch the other Scott play. Good. I mean, he got the invite. You can't renege on that. So. Here's the wild thing, too. Just a side note. Yeah. They both married the same lady with the same name. No, hold Not on. Not the same Not lady. Not the same lady. Their wives have the, the same, same name. name. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, boy. <laughs> That's that would have went wrong. <laughs>